so glad to see y'all. Yeah. Um, I'm Everett. And I'm Arisha. You can call me Rish. We're here because God has gathered us here. Mm -hmm. Who, Who gathers, gathers his people? God gathers his people. Who gathers his people? God gathers his people. They need to do it again. Yeah. They didn't even in an wait. accent, though. Oh, we have to do it again? A third time in an accent. You're right. Let's do it. We always do. Okay. What accent? British. British. Who, Who gathers, gathers his, his people? God, God gathers, gathers his people. people. That was so good. That Thank was so you. good. Thank you. I really Ooh, appreciate it. I mean, it gave me goosebumps, you, you know? No, no, that's not because of that. That's because oh. it's actually kind of chilly in here. Oh, you're right. Man, what? The temperature is so low. It's freezing. Freezing. Like when water transforms from. Just transitions from, oh, from a liquid, liquid state to, to a, a solid, solid state. Like freezes. It freezes. Freeze. Freeze. Freeze dance! Man, I'm so tired That's after that. Yeah. It makes me ready for this lesson. Yeah, yeah, wait, so what are we learning today? Oh, oh yeah, we're learning about the Last Supper. So Jesus nice. has his Last Supper before he goes disciples. to the cross. Yeah, before he goes to hey, the cross, awesome. which is crazy cool. Yeah, Okay. So. well before we get to the lesson, you mind if I pray? I would love that. Cool, bow your heads with me. Lord, um, thank you for who you are. I thank you for these um, men and women in this room and the kids watching at home. God, I just pray that you would open our eyes to see you, open our ears to hear you, and open our hearts to receive you, God. And so would you give wisdom to Logan, who is about to teach this lesson. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. I know that y'all are excited, so let's get on to the lesson. Take it away, Logan. Hey guys, I am so excited to jump into another lesson with y'all as we learn about Jesus' journey to the cross. Before we jump in, who can remind me, what did we learn about these last two weeks? Yeah, yeah, there was a, uh, a walk into Jerusalem. What was it called? It was called the triumphal entry because Jesus was entering Jerusalem triumphantly. And, and then we learned about a time when Jesus was questioned by the Pharisees. They thought that they could outsmart Jesus, but Jesus showed his wisdom. He, shows, he showed what he's got. And don't get me started on that donkey. You know, while we're talking about that donkey, who can give me their best donkey impersonation? Oh, those are pretty good. Here's mine. That was my donkey kick. <laughs> so anyways, now that we've got our little recap down, let's see what we've got next. Today, we're gonna to have another story about Jesus on his way to the cross. Uh, and before we jump in, I just have one question for you guys. What did Jesus do to save us? Think about it for a second, because it's a really important question. What did Jesus do to save us? The answer is simple. It's that Jesus lived a sinless life, died on the cross and rose from the dead. And so with that in mind, why don't we dive into our story today? We're gonna to be in Matthew 26. So get out your Bibles. Shing! And go ahead and flip open to Matthew 26. If you need some help, at the very beginning of your Bible, you'll find a table of contents. If you find Matthew, it'll tell you which page number to start on. So we're gonna be in Matthew chapter 26, towards the end of Matthew. If you hit the book of Mark, you've gone too far. So, 
In Matthew 26, we're gonna be starting in verse 17. Hit pause if you need time, but if not, read with me. Matthew 26, starting in verse 17. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, where will you have us prepare uh, for you to eat the Passover? He said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. Okay, so I'm thinking that Jesus is gonna want a rooftop uh, for, the, for the dinner, you know, and it, overlooking the temple, you know, really nice. No, 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 it needs to be somewhere Somewhere secluded where no one can spy on us. No way, man. You're totally wrong no. here. Peter, John, what, what are you guys arguing about? Well, you know, he's thinking that some soldier is going to come and take Jesus and we're going to have to have dinner in some underground bunker. No, okay, that is way too dramatic. I'm just saying with, with all the uproar that Jesus has been causing amongst the Pharisees and the religious teachers, <sighs> it, it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be the worst thing for us to think about safety for once. Well, here, I have a real question, okay? You know, we come to Jerusalem every year for the pa to celebrate the Passover, and we're yeah. here yeah. for a week, but why do we celebrate this feast? Like, what are we celebrating, mm. right? Yeah, that's a great question. That is a good question, but you know, it all starts 1,500 years ago, and with our great, 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 grandparents, mm -hmm. and they were slaves in Egypt. You see, as you know, our ancestors were slaves in Egypt for over 400 years. That's a long time. And during this time, the people begged for God to deliver them. And he did in a miraculous way. Oh, my, my back, it feels like We've been working these fields forever. It feels like a lifetime. Gosh, how long have we been slaves? Forever. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> but have you heard of the the Moses person who has went and told Pharaoh that he's going to have to deliver us? What? Yes, let, oh, let his people yeah. go. Okay, okay, sure. But let's be honest. I mean, uh, God would have to send plagues from the heavens before Pharaoh would let us free. Yeah, I guess you're right. The Nile would have to turn all bloody like. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. Oh, you're uh, right, it really is hopeless. Uh, but that's exactly what God did. Moses demanded that the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, let his people go. Each time that Pharaoh refused, God would send a plague. God turned the Nile to blood. He sent hordes of frogs and locusts and gnats and insects. He even made it hail and covered the land in darkness. But Pharaoh never let God's people go. Then Moses told Pharaoh that God was going to send another plague. Uh -huh. Fellow Israelite, fellow Israelite, come quick. What, what do you mean? We're slaves, we got work to do, remember? No, you don't understand. We have to go now. That was my saw. Anyways, why? Well, you know how all these plagues have been happening and God's been doing all this stuff against Pharaoh. Uh-huh, uh, -huh, well, uh -huh. now he's going to send an angel of death to kill the firstborn son in every household. What? Uh, what do we do? Well, Moses told us to go get the lamb and cut it and then put the door, put the blood on the door frame, and then the angel of death will pass over our house and we'll be safe. So we have to, to kill a lamb yes, and sir. put the blood on the door yes, and sir. the angel will just pass over? You got it. Well, let's go! Let's go! And so the Israelites, they listened to Moses and to God. They, they took a lamb and they would kill it and paint its blood over, over their, their doors. The angel of death would pass over accepting the sacrifice, but the, the Egyptians, they wouldn't listen. And so the angel of death killed their firstborn son. Pharaoh finally relented and set our people go. He set God's people go. And that's what we celebrate each year, that God saved us. 
Oh, okay. That makes sense. Uh -huh. yeah. That makes sense. The yeah. past Passover. Passover. Uh -huh. Hello, my disciple. Oh, oh, Jesus! Hey, hey, Jesus! Jesus. Jesus. Hey, my disciples. Hey, perfect timing. Actually, oh, we had okay. a question. Sure. Uh, where do you want to celebrate the Passover feast this year? Oh, great question. Okay, as you go into the city, you will see a certain man. Go to him. Tell him that the teacher says my time has come, and I will be eating the Passover feast with my disciples at your house. Okay? Okay. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. Oh, so. That's why the, the Jews would celebrate the Passover meal. Uh, remind me again, what was the meal a celebration of? It was a celebration of when God saved the Israel, Israelites from their captivity in Egypt, where they were slaves. And, and when the angel of death came, uh, what died in place of the Israelites? So, so instead of the Israelites losing their firstborn son, what died? That's right, it was a lamb. So the lamb died instead of the Israelites' sons. Does that sound familiar to you guys? I mean, who else died in, in our place? That's right, Jesus did. Are you starting to see the parallels here between the Passover meal and what Jesus did on that same during that same celebration? I want you to keep that comparison in mind as we read further into Matthew 26. So. Read with me, we're gonna be in uh, verse 19 of Matthew chapter 26. And it says, And the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at a table with the twelve. And as they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. Can I have your attention, friends? Uh, I have sad news to share with you tonight. You see, one of you will betray me here tonight. What? What, what do you mean? I mean, surely it's not me. Well, actually, it's going to be the person who put their hand in the dish with me. Is it... is it me, Jesus? You have said so. No, no, guys, it's, it's not like... it's not what you... I, I can explain. Basically, I... Oh, no. For the rest of you, please take this bread and eat it, for this is my body. And also of you, drink from this, for this is my blood, which conf confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Mark my words. I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it with you in my Father's kingdom. Let's sing together. Okay guys, so remind me, why do the Israelites celebrate Passover? It's because God saved them from Egypt where they were slaves. And who died to save us from our sins? Not from slavery but uh, in Egypt, but from slavery uh, in our sin. That's right, it's Jesus. Uh, you see, Jesus is teaching us that he is the true and final Passover lamb. In Egypt, a lamb had to be killed and its blood shed in order for them to live. But that lamb couldn't save them from their sins. And so God sent his son, Jesus. Just like the Passover lamb, Jesus died in our place. Now we eat the bread and we drink the wine or the juice in some cases. Uh, to remember that Jesus died and his blood was shed for us, for you and for me. Jesus is the true and final sacrificial Passover lamb. God's people had broken the old covenant and God promised to make a new covenant to forgive sins. The new covenant says that everyone who turns away from sin and trusts in Jesus's death and resurrection will be forgiven of his sins and will have eternal life. So if you want to know more about what you need to do in order to be saved from your sins, we just want to challenge you, whether you're two years old or whether you're 50 years old, to, to reach out to somebody, to, to reach out to a local pastor, to talk to your parents, to talk to your friends who know Jesus, and, and to ask yourself, what's holding me back from, from giving my life to Jesus completely and being saved from my sins? Maybe it's nothing. but. 
We'd love to talk with you guys about that too if you need us, so reach out. But that's all we have for our lesson today, so I'll see you guys later. Wow, what a great lesson, Logan. You know what, that's so true. Jesus is the final and true Passover lamb. And that should make us want to worship, right? Yeah, it should. And so today we're going to be singing Center My Life, which is a song of confession. And we sing songs of confession because Jesus is our Savior. And so if you're able, please stand up and let's worship.
What a cool story. Jesus dined in the Last Supper with his disciples, yeah. and he, he told them that he was going to the cross. Yeah. And then he, he washed their feet. Wow, what an image of a savior who serves us and then goes to the cross for those people, even though, man, Judas was in that room with him, yeah. his own betrayer. Yeah. That's just, man, it makes me re want to respond by going on mission. So, man, I want to call y'all to, to go on mission, to, to tell your friends about this Jesus yeah. who, who serves others, who loves others, and ultimately sacrificed himself for everyone that they might have eternal life with him. Yeah. You know what, God calls us to mission with this in Matthew 28, starting in verse 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Go in peace, Paradox Kids. <laughs>